Michael Mock says, Jimmy G, new school fans with instant gratification want to switch up with a bad season right after the Super Bowl. All good things take time. Be patient. Oh, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm not a big Jimmy G fan, man. You may have, maybe you haven't seen my channel before, but uh, I'm not really big into Jimmy G. It seems to me what Kyle Shanahan should be looking for is a quarterback who can like operate when he's dropping back and not, you know, play, no play action, no RPO, just straight drop back. Because according to, Football outsiders who tracks this stuff on straight five step and seven step dropbacks last season, 2019. That was Jimmy's great year. He was the lowest, the lowest EPA of any quarterback in the league, straight dropbacks, and the lowest success rate. He's like a negative EPA and a success rate of like 30%. So when Shanahan privately feels like, look, I prop up this guy, all of his numbers are manufactured by me that's what he's talking about like he, a coach isn't going to manufacture throws from a straight drop back you know you can put together a progression but ultimately the defense knows you're passing you got to go through your reads read the defense it's not like you got play action and you get all these uh linebackers to jump the wrong direction you have wide open receivers it's not that i mean shanahan can give those openings to any quarterback he can give them to cj he can give them to nick he can give them to jimmy but what he can't do is help a quarterback when they're down two touchdowns in the fourth quarter say hey forget the run game forget play action all we can do is drop back and pass can you do it that's a great quarterback um and that's what jimmy can't do he can't and he needs to. If you're getting paid $27 million a year, you need to be able to do that. Because eventually, every year that you're on the team, you're taking money away from people who, from free agents who are leaving and going elsewhere. And your supporting cast is getting worse and worse. The depth is getting worse and worse. So you become more and more of the engine of the team, not just a peripheral guy who's handing off and uh, making plays here and there, making two or three th throws a game. No, 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 no. You're... You're the, you're the guy. You're everything. And I don't think he can do it. Just the numbers have shown he can't do it. He was a, you know, a vestigial piece. He was, he was, you know, six completions in the NFC Championship game. He's just not the engine of the offense. Anyway, let's keep going. Anthony will be back eventually. It's, you know, I think. Let's see. Mark Salas. Thank you, Mark, for the $5 donation. I appreciate you. Tony, here's $5 toward your new vape pen so you can hang with the other teenagers in the parking lot with your Toyota 86. <laughs> Buy an M2351. I actually quit smoking cigarettes, so please don't give me that. Uh, Toyota 86 seems pretty cool. I had My dad had a Toyota RSX, and it seems kind of like the same except a back wheel drive i mean i'd love someone suggested the supra that looks like one hell of a car but i i'm not gonna sp spend fifty thousand dollars on a car yet maybe one day i don't know what an m235i is but i'll look it up i know nothing about cars i've been reading Edmonds a lot recently which is a lot of fun what can we get back in this draft after trading down mark thank you you basically at spent ten dollars to ask that question so i let me let me give you a ten dollar answer. What what can we get back in this draft after trading down? Well, it seems to me that trading down is the move. I wouldn't take Trey Lance with the top twenty pick, and it doesn't seem like Kyle Trask is going to go in the top twenty. And I wouldn't take Justin Fields with a top twenty pick, and Zach Wilson is probably going to be the second pick in the draft. So yeah, uh, why not trade down? Take a quarterback in the 20s, whoever you like, and get an extra pick. If you trade down from 15 to – and what I would do is I wouldn't trade straight down. Trade down from 15 to 18 or 19. Then trade down from 19 to 22. And then trade down from 22 to 26. You could trade down three times. Or you could trade down twice in increments and just pick up extra middle round picks along, or, uh, along the way. That's what I would do. Because this team needs a quarterback and a center and a guard, and a tackle, and an edge rusher, 
and a corner and a safety. Other than that, yeah, all of that. So trade down, get as many picks as possible. Remember, Kyle wanted Kirk Cousins. Jimmy is better. I don't know, man. Where is Jimmy? What happened to Jimmy? This, I mean, in 2018, he tore his ACL. This year, he had a high ankle sprain. Played two games. What did he play? Six games? Where was he? I just, I, I don't understand, man. I, I grew up in the era of Brett Favre and guys who just, you have to kill him to keep him off the field. This guy is like, I don't know. I'm not 100%. I'm sorry. I just can't play. Okay. Well, CJ, strap it up. I don't get it. We need to give McGlinchey an opposing team jersey. <laughs> Uh, yes, if you give, would that make him better? If you just gave him the jersey of an opposing team, would he all of a sudden be more dangerous? Would he be better? Would he help the 49ers if he thought he was hurting them? Maybe that's the key for Mike McGlinchey. Give him a, an opposing team's jersey and say, you're on their team now. And all of a sudden he starts helping the 49ers in all kind of different ways. You know? Makes sense. Makes sense. Maybe the reason the the 49ers always believed in Solomon Thomas is he would just give Mike McGlinchey the business in practice. Maybe the reason the Niners thought Cassius Marsh was really good is because he killed Mike McGlinchey in practice. Actually, that's true. I don't know if you've if you've been watching if you've been watching this YouTube channel since its inception, then you know that I actually started this YouTube channel just to make videos of Mike McGlinchey. I couldn't stand that draft pick in 2018. So I started a YouTube channel just to post the videos of his one-on-one -on -one battles against Cassius Martian training camp. I post them every I post them every day. They lasted on there for about a year. And then eventually the Niners told me that there's a new policy saying I had to take them all down or something. So I took them down. They don't exist anymore. But that's why I started the YouTube. That's why my life has changed. Basically, Mike McGlinchey is the reason that I'm on YouTube. And Cassius Marsh used to just make this guy look goofy. And I was thinking, yeah, I mean, if I can see why the Niners like Cassius Marsh, because they must think highly of Mike McGlinchey. And this guy makes Mike McGlinchey look like a total stiff. That being said, in hindsight, it's just that Mike McGlinchey is a total stiff. So that's how they got that, those two evaluations wrong, you know. Anyway, what if Sertan is there? I wouldn't trade down. There's a lot of really good corners in this draft. J.C. Horn from South Carolina. There's a lot of really good corners in this draft. I think you could trade down from 15 to 22, 23, and pick up a couple more picks in the top 60, get everything you need. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, man, really, this guy really did a Windows update right during the show. I don't know, man. I might. He, I think he's fired. He might have to be fired. I don't know. I'm cutthroat. I've never fired someone from an unpaid kick before, but I might start. I might fly all the way to Australia just to tell him, you know what? You're cut. You're out. Sorry, buddy. Why do people use the Jimmy was injured excuse when he played so poorly while healthy against AZ week one? And don't people want a reliable starter? Yeah, like don't you want a starter who stays healthy? All I see with Jimmy is a guy who's kind of brittle and a guy who can't avoid hits. He doesn't do a great job of protecting himself, and he doesn't do a great job of absorbing the blows. I mean, I don't know. It's a it's it's not seven on seven football. He throws a nice ball when he's healthy, but it's eleven on eleven. You have to deal with the violence of the game, and he doesn't seem to do it very well. He didn't prove that part of his game in New England. He started two games in New England and got hurt in the second one. His tenure in New England was a lot like his tenure here this season, except he played well there. I don't know, man. Yes, the Niners. If you listen to Kyle, he basically was like, you know, yeah, we win with Jimmy. It's because Jimmy's a starting caliber quarterback. That's the nicest thing he could say about Jimmy. Have you ever noticed that? The nicest thing he says about Jimmy is he's a, he's a starter in the NFL. And that's Kyle basically saying like, look, I'm really good. All you got to give me is a starting caliber quarterback and I win. The reason I've been losing is because I haven't had starting caliber quarterbacks here, which is on him. But that's what he's saying. It's not 
a real backing of Jimmy Garoppolo. It's like, you know, if we can find another option and there's probably a million better options and yeah, that's the way I see it. I just don't think he's really looked at hard at the options out there. He's coaching a team. Is Jimmy clutch or not? I mean, no, no, absolutely not. Dude. His clutchness is way overstated. His clutchness comes from the throw in new Orleans last year, which was, uh, it was fourth and one. He threw the ball behind the line of scrimmage to George Kittle and George Kittle like broke eight tackles. That was Kittle's play. And then the the two throws he made against the Rams, they were wide open. So that's his legacy. In games that were like real, real pressures on, like the Super Bowl, no, he was not clutch. He crumbled. And that's why he's going to be replaced eventually. No, I don't think he's clutch. No. No. But the real problem isn't that he's not clutch, it's that he's not that good. He's just not that good. He's serviceable. That's like my wife telling me to continue to be to be together unless I find an upgrade. She's like, yeah, you know, no promises. I can't say what the future will hold. And I'm always going to be looking around. But yeah, you're my you're my husband for now. That's what Kyle said about Jimmy yesterday. Yeah, you know, no promises. Can't tell you what the future holds. Always going to be looking around. But we technically are together now. It's like, oh, great. Let's go for a walk. Let's hold hands. Let's go. Let's go to a movie. I don't think so. I don't think so. Kyle Sanahan, the thing I really like about him is he can't really lie. He's like Jimmy Jim Carrey from from no, you know, do you remember that? He, he's he's here's who he is. I think it was from um Austin Powers 2, the spy who shagged me. It was Will Ferrell's little um cameo. And I, I kind of giggle at Will Ferrell cameos. Will Ferrell movies are too much Will Ferrell, but Will Ferrell cameos are right. And he was that one character where he would tell you the truth if you asked him three times. If you asked him first, like, who are you working for? He wouldn't say, go to hell. Who are you working for? Shove it up. You rear in. And he'd be like, you tell me right now who you're working for. Okay, I'll tell you I work for Dr. Evil. And then all you had to do was just ask him three times. And then he just got bored by the charade of it, and he just gives in. That's Kyle Shanahan. He'd be like, Kyle, is, is, is Jimmy going to be your, your quarterback next year? He'll be like, yes, I believe so. And, and then end it there. He'd be like, Kyle. Are you certain that he's going to be your quarterback next year? And he'll just like, <sighs> and launch into it and just give everything. And it's like, all right, well, thanks. It's the three rule, except for Kyle, it's basically two. And sometimes it's just one. He just can't bear to not tell the truth. It's like beneath him. I don't know what it is. I like it though. As a journalist, I really do like it. Uh, Jittery takes our team 4-12 to the Super Bowl. As soon as Jittery joined our team, we started winning. You can't guarantee healthiness. Uh, you're the one who calls him jittery. Why would you want a quarterback that you call jittery? Niner bot. Are you a real person? Am I am I arguing with someone who's not real and giving me money? Are there bots who who pay me? I like that. If that's the case, then geez. I gotta I gotta figure out that. But uh yeah, so but I think what Kyle is saying is, yeah, J- Jimmy is the one starting caliber quarterback who's played here since, since Kyle's been the head coach. That's his point. Do you agree with him? Brian Hoyer, CJ Beathard, Nick Mullins, Jimmy Garoppolo. So you're comparing Jimmy to other backups. What does that say? Kyle, all, the only thing Kyle says, yeah, he's a starter in the NFL. He doesn't say he's a, he's a starter. He wants, he's the, you know, he's the best quarterback on the team. He's a starter. Yeah. Will we look for a better starter? Yeah. Can they get a better starter? Probably.